part two chapter twenty five of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty five the hohenstaufens in italy the italian rule of the hohenstaufens is one of the most romantic episodes in european history frederick the first otherwise called frederick barbarossa or the red beard was a man of remarkable genius since the time of charlemagne he was the most gifted occupant of the german imperial throne he sought at the expenditure of much blood and treasure to restore the imperial power over the lombard cities his whole aim was to crush out the uprisings of italian freedom he had fierce conflicts with the popes over his rights in italy he was a man of earnest piety and he finally became a martyr to the deliverance of the holy sepulchre he was drowned in the caliadnus in cilicia eleven ninety while leading one of the armies of the third crusade his son henry married constance heiress of the norman kingdom of lower italy and sicily often called the two sicilies thus the hohenstaufen sceptre shadowed the whole of italy twice this henry the sixth eleven ninety to ninety seven tried to conquer this inheritance for himself after several vicissitudes his son frederick the second was crowned emperor at Aix la chapelle in twelve fifteen on account of his extraordinary attainments and fine natural gifts he was called the wonder of the world he was far ahead of his time in the liberality of his sentiments he gave profound attention to his dominions in sicily he had advised the settlement there of a colony of saracens the little affair was an outgrowth of the crusades here he had a small army which stood ready to defend his cause when he was crowned at Aix la chapelle he took upon himself the vow of the crusader his wife iolante was heiress of the crown of jerusalem and in twelve twenty eight he set sail for palestine here he was crowned king of jerusalem his possessions in italy were meanwhile in danger of being blotted out through the vigorous management of pope gregory the ninth gregory had excommunicated him ostensibly for delaying his departure for palestine but really as we believe to make him so unpopular with his people in the kingdom of the two sicilies that his rule could be terminated but here gregory failed he was compelled to acknowledge frederick as rightful ruler over the two sicilies however the struggles between frederick and the popes continued from year to year the popes used their utmost influence to weaken the force of the emperor not only among his sicilian subjects but in germany as well the fall of the hohenstaufens in sicily was only a question of time when frederick died the case was hopeless pope innocent the fourth declared that sicily was really a part of the states of the church and so took possession of it conrad the fourth left germany to take care of itself and undertook to regain the hold on sicily conrad died before the struggle was over and his son conradin found not only a slender hold on sicily but simply a mere tithe of the ancestral possessions in germany as his inheritance at first manfred a natural son of frederick took possession of the two sicilies and held them against the forces and manipulation of the roman pope what should the popes now do they followed one another in rapid succession but each one kept a careful eye on sicily they gave up the struggle at last because of the fidelity of the sicilies to the hohenstaufens and sold their alleged right to the sicilies first to england and then to france pope clement the fourth aided charles of anjou to take possession of the sicilian kingdom charles was crowned king after the battle of benevento in twelve sixty six when manfred was slain conradin now came down from swabia and appeared upon the scene he was defeated in the battle of tagliacoso and taken prisoner and put to death in twelve sixty eight this put an end to the german rule south of the alps the popes were once more at ease 
so far as italy was concerned it had been a bitter struggle though their rule was restored the intense hostility which it had engendered on the part of germany did not die out the german rulers never forgot the affair and in the later centuries lost no opportunity to put their bitter memories in practical form against the papacy it was well however for the future unification of italy that the progress towards nationality was not complicated by the presence of germany on her soil in their opposition to the hohenstaufens the popes were working for a higher end than they had in mind end of chapter twenty five